Okay, in our liturgy for gardening, I'll be the leader, you be the people, you get to read the bold parts. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So we'll start with that together. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call this meeting to order, so we need people in the seats so that we can make sure we have a quorum. Fancy Presbyterian terms. Yes. Do you have words that you need to? Yeah, you use that one. All right. Our desire in this congregational meeting was really to be able to share what's going on in the life of the church. Uh, we did not have our congregational meeting, our annual one in January that normally happens. Um, so we, we pushed it back for a variety of reasons, but we are having it now. So thank you for being a part of this. We'll keep it quick and succinct, uh, but also informational so that when the food time comes, you know we're going right from this to eating, so hang in there. I, I felt like it would be appropriate this morning. Um, we'll do the business in just a moment, but we're going to begin. It's called a liturgy for gardening, and I just felt like it was so appropriate given what we just talked about in the sermon today. So Amy Hutchinson, who is our clerk of session, she's amazing, keeps me on track in so many ways. She's going to help me with this liturgy. Uh, would you pray with me together? O creator who calls forth life, may this ground and our labors here invested yield good provision for the nourishing of both body and soul. Lord, let our labors in this garden be fruitful. Lord, let our labors in this garden be blessed. As we work the soil of this garden plot here at Bethel Church, furrowing, planting, watering, and harvesting, may such acts become to us a living parable a prayer acted out rather than spoken. Lord, let our labors in this garden be fruitful. Lord, let our labors in this garden be blessed. As we co-labor with you and with your creation, to produce a beneficial harvest, may we find in such toil a kind of rest. May this plot of ground become a hallowed space and these hours a sacred time for reflection for conversation with friends and family, and for fellowship with you, our creator. Lord, let our labors in this garden be fruitful. Lord, let our labors in this garden be blessed. Through our tending of these, your delightful creations, vegetables and fruits, beans and berries, vines and stalks and roots and flowers, and specifically the seeds here at Bethel Church, renew our own tired hopes, Redeem our own wearied imaginations as we cultivate gentle order, training, pruning, weeding, and protecting. So cultivate and train our wayward hearts. O Lord, that rooted in you the forms of our lives might spread in winsome witness, maturing to bear the good fruit of grace, expressed in acts of compassionate love. Lord, let our labors in this garden be fruitful. Lord. Let our labors in this garden be blessed. Walk with us now, O Lord, in the stillness of this tilled and quiet space, that when we venture again into this still greater garden of your world, we might be prepared by the long practice of your presence to offer our lives as a true and nourishing provision to all who hunger for mercy and hope and meaning, a true and nourishing provision to all who hunger for you. Lord, let our labors in this garden be fruitful. Lord, let our labors in this garden be blessed. Amen. Amen. Well, we are going to call this meeting to order, and we need to establish a quorum. So, Amy, do we have the necessary numbers here to move forward? Okay. With that in mind, I'm just going to quickly let us know what our agenda is. It will be on the screen, but we are going to hear financial reports. We're going to get a Bethel Care report. We will get an administration and personnel report. We'll hear an update on officers and the process of our officer training, as well as what their terms are. We're going to get a, an update on our transitional pastor committee report, the serve committee, connect, worship, and fellowship. And we will close by remembering those who've gone to their reward in the last year plus, um, starting in January of 2020 going all the way to very recently in 2021. So that's what we're up to. Um, everybody who is on uh, task to report, we're gonna begin with 
Vic Petrenko with our financial report. Thanks. Is it on? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. First of all, I'm going to ask you to praise our Lord Jesus for the blessings our congregation um, has had this past year. So I'm going to show you two slides. Very simple. I'm going to compare you to where we were two years ago when I first talked to you about the budget, and then I'll show you where we ended up last year, and then I'll show you this current year's budget on the second slide. Slide, please. So if you look at the right side of the slide, that's where we were two years ago. We exceeded, our revenue exceeded our expenses by basically $1,600. Last year, COVID, a lot of things going on in the world and in our church. You can see that our revenue exceeded expenses by 121,000. So that means we were 121,000 to the good. There's a lot of things that good, there's a lot, no, don't, there's no need for clapping. There's a lot of things that went into this. Um, and if you need the details of that, I have a great team on the finance committee. You got, uh, I'm not sure if Tom Nist is here. You got Mark Ariel, you got Tommy Shores and Alan Hauser's the workhorse. So they have all the details, but um, we were very blessed last year. Um, revenues did not meet budget, but we put uh, extensive controls in for expenses. Anything over $1,000 came to the finance committee for approval. So there's a lot of work that went on to make sure we were healthy coming out of COVID, to include the PPP that we, we received. Um, and we were forgiven for this year. So um, that's the comparison between 2019 and 2020. Next slide, please. This is the budget for this year. As you can see on the left side, those are the teams responsible for the strategy. Uh, we worked really hard to go up from about 10% for the serve committee. Uh, up, I think it's up to 10.5 or 10.6 now. We're gonna try and grow that every year so that our serve team has more means to do their mission work. And on the right side, that's the strategy. That's, the, that's wrong, that shouldn't be strategy, that should be support. Um, you can see that that accounts for $911,000. But overall budget for this year is a uh, million fifty-seven, And I can tell you at the end of April, we've been, we were sitting pretty good because of our forgiveness of the PPP loan. And we're just over 100,000 to the good right now at the end of April. Okay, thank you, you guys have a great day. Please feel free to do that, uh, but we're going to keep it rolling, and the hope is is that as these people share something, and if there's something that comes up in your mind, please go talk to them afterwards. Bring your questions, and you all know that you are always welcome to attend session if there are questions that you have for session. Uh, Bethel Cemetery, I believe that is Colin coming up. Thank you. Okay, Brad. Uh, that's our Bank of Oz. Uh, and I see, uh, Alan, are, are they uh, being bought out by who this next week? Where's Alan? Oh, is he? Okay. I think United Community Bank's buying. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's uh, our bank for the church is... Uh, um, so that's our save, our checking account, our CD, and our financial uh, savings, our uh, account. It's 227-641-59. And uh, uh, so... Uh, we had uh, 17 barrels in 20. We had seven so far this year in 21. And uh, we've had six uh, in-ground sold plots for in-ground cremation. Uh, plots are $750 for a member and 2,000 for non-members. Colibarium's the same, 750 and 1,500 for non-members. 
cremation garden is 500 from member and 1,500 from non-member. And uh, appreciate your contributions to cemetery fund. So I'm here to present the um, Bethel Foundation 2020 annual report for you guys. Um, I serve on the board and as of the end of the year, we had $790,000 in, um, in the foundation. And some of the things that we've, we've had kind of a quiet year in 2020, but uh, some of the th things that we supported were Children's Hope Alliance, um, the Outreach Foundation, and we had also set aside monies to help fund the Abaco mission trip, which did not happen. So we hope to uh, have another mission group to support in 2021 or 2022. And, um, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar with the foundation, it's a, a nonprofit charitable organization that is separate from the church. It was set up as a way for people, it, it created an endowment fund, and this fund or foundation can support things that go outside of the church's normal annual budget, and it's a way to create like a lasting uh, legacy with, you know, some of your, your resources. And um, so uh, I serve on it, Robin Strain, uh, Pete Galloway, and we have three new members who are still getting up to speed due to COVID, which are David Beard, Hardy McConnell, and um, Coble, Marshall Coble. So, so anyway, if you guys have questions, you're welcome to ask more of me. Thanks. Good morning. Some of you, I think, want to know what Bethel Care is all about. Bethel Care is an outreach ministry of Bethel Presbyterian Church whose mission is to minister to the needs of persons both within our congregation and the community at large. Our priority is serving our homebound population, those facing an immediate health crisis, those hospitalized, recovering at home, or in nursing and long-term health facilities. Our team members make hundreds of calls supporting folks facing surgeries, illness, death, and family concerns. We respond to requests for anointing and communion. We maintain contact and try to encourage those who are isolated because of infirmities. We meet needs by telephone referrals, medical counseling, resourcing, and education. Medical equipment is loaned and delivered to Covenant Partners. We facilitate a support group for caregivers of those suffering from Alzheimer's. This past summer, we organized, planned, and implemented a drive-through prayer wall, which served 170 persons during a 13-week period. The numbers served were almost equally divided between Covenant Partners, the community, and the prayer wall meditation site on church grounds. The prayer wall is now a permanent fixture located in the courtyard. Covenant partners Al and Linda Alexander customize, provide customized handmade stained glass angel figurines for those with serious illness and trauma. Linda encloses beautiful handmade cards with inspirational messages. And this ministry emphasizes the love, comfort, and healing presence of the Holy Spirit and these angels are uplifting and joyfully received. The card ministry is also an outreach project of Bethel Care. Among other things, members of the card ministry review notices sent out on the church prayer requests and send handmade cards emphasizing encouragement, hope, comfort, and healing. Our clergy provided graveside services and support of family members during the COVID uh, pandemic. BC, that is before COVID, Bethel Care's life and health outreach conducted workshops on addiction, navigating the Medi Medicare insurance network, 
training to help folks better use the world of technology, like your laptops and phones and so forth. And once the COVID pandemic is truly history, this workshop activity will resume. Bethel Care, the C in care, stands for concern, compassion, confidentiality, and connection. The A is for assistance, acceptance, availability. The R is for reaching out, resource, respect. The E is for education, and encouragement. The model for Bethel Care is joy with capital letters. Jesus, others, yourself. Serving sacrificially and bearing burdens daily are the hallmarks of Bethel Care. Our team members put Jesus front and center in all that we do, putting a priority on serving others in our church and community, whether visiting in the home, assisted living facilities, hospital situations, or providing workshops of life and health topics. Bethel Care is a mission of service that reflects the love of Jesus himself. If you have questions, want to know more about our ministry, you can contact me or Karis Kemp or Tom Labonte or our parish nurse, our, 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 our Jim, uh, Beth Moss. Thank you very much. Hi there. The A&P committee uh, consists of Buster Knox, Bill Weatherington, Carrie Doby, Jake Grathwald, and myself. Um, currently, we are working with staff to review all job descriptions to see what updates need to be made and how things need to be changed based on how we function today um, after COVID and are there things that we need to do differently and also this year we have um, planned to start reviewing our policy manuals. There are many changes that need to be made in those policy manuals to update and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully simplify. Uh, we, there are too many pages and too many things for all of us to remember. So. We love serving um, alongside staff, and we are walking closely with staff um, now, and we'll continue doing that. Staff is doing an amazingly awesome job, so uh, please thanks to all our staff. Thank you. Good morning. And just to echo what Janie just said, I personally want to thank, and I'm, the session would like to thank our staff, um, Karis, Jeremy, Jan, Beth Moss. Also want to thank those that have filled in in the last couple months with our ser uh, sermons in Vern and Tom Labonte and Mark Moss. Thanks to Brad and everybody else behind the scenes making all this happen through COVID. So here we are, we're out of it. And one of the decisions that session put forth, you've probably read about recently. Um, many of you have read about session's decision to extend current deacons and elders terms of service. And you read that and you say, well, what are the reasons for that? I'm gonna summarize it with three main reasons. There are others. I invite you to call me, contact me, see me in person, and I'll be glad to share those with you. But here are the major reasons why we've decided to extend the service of current deacons and elders. By the way, this is upon their agreement. So in other words, they've been asked to do it, and they have responded to the clerk of session as to whether or not they will or not. Number one, ongoing restructuring of deacon and elder training. As you know, this started pre-COVID. A committee that some of you are in front of me uh, this morning have done a lot of work towards 
looking at our training and how we're handling that and improving it. And what we've done before has been good. This is just an improvement process. COVID hit, and as you can imagine, the committee did meet virtually, but have not concluded all of those findings. Number two, not meeting regularly for over a year, obviously due to COVID. It can sometimes be difficult to reach out to people personally, face to face, say, hey, we think you'd be a great deacon and elder. Would you prayerfully consider this? Number three, transition period. We have a new associate pastor in Karis. Most recently, we will start the process looking for a head pastor. Um, this transition period has been good for us. And then again, you throw in, not to sound like a beat, beat record, but the COVID situation, um, the transition there uh, is ongoing. And so as we come to a conclusion here, what that all means is that the current class of 2021 will extend their service until August of 22. The class of 2022 will extend their service to August of 2023. And then the class of 2022 will extend to 2024, August of 2024. Finally, a nominating committee um, will be appointed and will begin their work in January of 2022. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'd be glad to go into further detail. Thank you. Well, I gave, I gave Nancy the out since she's already been up here. So good morning. I know we haven't sent a significant amount of information out because, um, frankly, it's just been a work in process, and so I wanted to kind of give everybody an update where we are, and we started out by voting as a session to work through ECO through a transitional process, uh, pastor, transitional pastor team, um, associate team, and so what that means is the individual is, is basically trained in um, the way ECO, or really, just really on what does transition mean. So it's important for me to really note up here that this person is like nine to 12 months. I know I should say 12 months because everybody wants me to say 12. But I want you to know that our goal is to get this person as quickly as possible. We wanna make sure we're listening to God and that we, we really know that this person is the right fit for staff because frankly, we know our staff is doing an amazing job. But just as we brought Karis in to do some really awesome things, she's been doing multiple roles. So we want her to be able to focus on what her roles are. And so this person will help take some of that off, right? So that our staff can really be where they're supposed to be. So I'm excited that we have um, a couple candidates that we're talking to, so we don't feel like that time frame is that far out. Um, but I also just want to keep reiterating, not that this person wouldn't be good, and so I'm not trying to scare you in this, but it's important just to remember this person is 12 months. So this person comes in and walks alongside our staff and is with us and really paves the way so that we have a solid, positive foundation for when we do have a pastor come in. So I think that is really the, the bulk of what we were going to share. I would encourage you to reach out to Nancy, to Ryan or myself. We have had someone, um, a gentleman, I don't know if he'd feel comfortable saying his name or not, but was very helpful coming to session and sh sharing some thoughts. It provides more di dialogue for us because, you know, we want to make sure that we're listening to the congregation. But I just want to give you some peace of mind to know that we feel pretty confident that we'll have somebody coming in here. No one to change anything. We think that we're really, you know, a beautiful church. And so we really want to celebrate that and find someone who can come alongside us and just help us be who we are. So with that, that's all we have. Good morning. This is my favorite thing to do, <laughs> talk in front of people. Although I have some great, exciting news. Um, from Serve Sacrificially, just, I just want to give a quick rundown of what we did last year. You know, it was a challenge to do mission during quarantine, but um, the year was certainly not a bust. We were blessed and celebrate the opportunities God allowed for us to accomplish in his kingdom. 
We did things such as uh, we had errand runners during the lockdown. Food was a big topic because as people were struggling, we did um, several food drives, bag, bag assemblies, and monetary donations that supported Neighborhood Care Center, Watchmen of the Streets, Angels and Sparrows, Mooresville Soup Kitchen, Loaves and Fishes, and Block Love with Blue Star Grill. We have a partnership with Neighborhood Care that we did have tutoring that's ongoing. Uh, for our friends in the Smithville area, we did Easter basket and Thanksgiving meal box assembly and delivery. Watchmen of the streets, we supplied emergency kits. And I will say the homeless camp visits, they never stopped during the pandemic. That was a continuing thing. Uh, Bethel Haven, in collaboration with Safe Families, we were blessed to uh, be able to host three different families while they were in transition. And of course, the Bethel Fall Festival, you know, we had great plans to do that pre-COVID, so we had to scale it back a little bit last year, but we still had a successful event uh, that supported the Charlotte Rescue Mission. And then globally, um, we did support Eric Sarwar in Pakistan at his school to aid in their COVID struggles. So that was last year, but now looking forward, you know, we have the Bethel 200, and that's still a thing. God gave us that vision and mission, and our 10-year plan, you know, with our one-year bump last year, you know, that's not going to stop God's plan for us uh, to serve with compassion while demonstrating God's love to all people. We must be active for his glory. We have many opportunities to engage in serving others, ministries that impact local families, strengthening our own Bethel families, ways to experience global mission moments, and you can bet that as soon as mission trips that we can safely do those, we will be doing them for sure. So how do you find out about opportunities where you can plug in? Well, have you noticed the Serve Spotlights? That's our monthly focus that we've been, we started up doing, uh, focusing on a ministry that we support. And that is on slides prior to worship every week, or most weeks, I should say. And then, of course, the Wednesday emails. I'm pretty sure everybody should have emails, and every week there's usually a little blurb on there on the serve sacrificially part. And that provides the links, info, signups, whatever you might need to become a part of that monthly focus. Um, so, I mean, there's just, I could go on and on. I'd only have a couple minutes, and I'd really am taking longer than I thought. But anyway, um, so come and talk to me or anybody on SURF team. We have Susan Kittle, Marcus Lee, Beth Lester, Olin Persons, Mary Kay Patero, Robin Serain, Donna Waters, Richard Wilson, and Linda Woolridge. It's time to re-engage people. Let, and you don't know where to serve? Well, pray about it. You know, the Spirit will poke you and God will equip you. And last week, as Tom suggested, maybe do something that you don't want to do. Get out of your comfort, comfort zone and serve someplace that you never have. Any of these ways may stir a passion within you that you never even knew that you had. So remember, read the Wednesday emails. The season of seclusion and inactivity is over. Let's be the do, go and do, and live out our mission of serving people to ignite a lifelong passion for Jesus Christ. Thank you. Well, if you're not doing something with Serve Sacrificially, Connect Consistently has plenty for you to do, too. This past year, we struggled because of COVID, um, but we include under our main category all the Sunday school programs, the adult Sunday school programs, life groups, Bible studies, women's ministry, it, it's all there, but the couple things that I want to highlight is that the adult Sunday school classes served to thrive last year. The, because of Zoom, we reached beyond the state borders and were bringing people in on Sunday mornings, and that has continued, and such a blessing that is. Um, I, I want to shout out to Jeremy and Jan they have been 
outstanding in trying to keep the children very much informed and engaged in programs. Jeremy has really worked his tail off too, trying to keep the youth engaged and they've been flexible in what they could do. They've, they've tried multiple programs and now coming up this summer, we have the camp for the children in July and the youth ministry are going to be going on a trip um, there's much that's going on, but the thing that I really want to highlight today is that on June 27th, the life groups are going to be trying to re-engage, and uh, we're having a cookout, a gathering at David and Karen Beard's party barn. Now, this it is very informal. We're going to have a cookout. What Presbyterian goes to an event if there isn't food? So we will be having food, but come about 4 o'clock. If you are in a life group now, great. Come and share what works for you with those who would like to be in a life group. If you just want to learn and say, plug me in someplace, come. Uh, about 4 o'clock, there'll be a lot of information coming out on this. And um, again, it's June 27th. Food will begin probably around 6 o'clock. And um, we, we hope to see many of you there. Thank you. Good morning. What a roller coaster the past year has been, but God's timing has always been perfect. Um, through worship, our discussions have been about how we would worship and serve our Lord. And so that brought us last year as we closed down, we had worship on the lawn. And then that conversation stirred and got us back indoors. Um, with our amazing staff, we're still online and going, so we're operating live and online. Um, I can't thank our staff enough um, with conversations with worship committee, just where we were able to go and what we did. Um, so now we're at new worship times. Um, our conversations were just based on what we felt like we needed as the people of Bethel to give you the service of desire. And um, that's really was our focus. So we will assess new, our new worship times over the summer and see where God leads us for the fall. But um, it's been good. Our committee is um, Rich Landis serves with me and um, Jeff Kittle, who has been a little absent lately, so keep continuing to pray for Jeff. Dale Robbins, Andrew Mashburn, um, Susan Gibbs is an, an at-large member, and we're hoping to add David Lucas. So. Those are people on the worship committee. Thank you. Hey, I'm representing the fellowship committee. Uh, we Historically, we've been known as the kitchen crew, but we are a vital behind the scenes group that's called upon um, with many of the other activities and staff. We're beginning to reorganize and regroup. Uh, you, you do remember Sunday coffee. We're gonna start that back up. July, lemonade under the trees after the service and the lunch that you're gonna get ready to enjoy. Uh, we also need people that are good at just organizing things because, you know, I had no kitchen experience when I walked in there. So the, the ladies in there will train you. We need men too. We need heavy lifting, dishwashers. So we, we need many help. Uh, that way we can spread the load because many hands make light the load. Come and see me. Give me your contact information. I'll put you on our group email list and you, know, you can serve whenever it's convenient. Our new slogan is, come to the kitchen where it is warm. <laughs> well, I, I hope that um, this meeting mostly served its purpose of letting you know what's going on. We've all been siloed inside our homes. We have been uh, dispersed from amongst each other. We've had some transitions going on within this church 
Uh, we want to be as forthright as we can be about what is happening. If you ever have questions, please know that you're welcome to bring them to any member of staff. We are here 9 to 1 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Come into the building. You're welcome to be here. Uh, just know that this is your church. You have a stake in this place and what goes on. Bring your ideas. Bring your uh, imagination. Um, so thank you for being a part. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule. A few things that we're going to do before we end. Today we're going to remember our, our Bethel Church members who have passed away in the past year and a half. And usually we do have a handbell, which uh, this is on me, folks. I did not go get the handbell this morning, but at the end, we're just going to have a moment of silence to remember all of these people. I will wrap up in some prayer. I also want you to know that whatever chair you're sitting on is the chair that you're going to take outside or inside to these tables um, so that you can have lunch afterwards. If you need help with that, find a strong, able-bodied person around you to give you a hand. So let's remember those who've gone to their reward. Anne Meacham. Charles Knox, Claude McConnell, Clifford Jones, Isla Nofziger, Jackie Almond, Janet Knox, Jan Cummings, Jean Vance, John Washam, Joseph McGee the third, Peggy Morgan, Ray Howison, and Ruth Kay. Lord God, for a church like Bethel, where we are nearing being around for about 200 years, what a legacy. Lord, we remember the saints who have walked these halls, who have loved people in this space. We thank you that they are with you, that there is joy in their new reality, that they have left their tent behind, but they have gone on to what is even more tangible, what is even more real, and that is your kingdom. And we are grateful for the legacy they leave behind, for the uh, work that they've done in this place, and we celebrate them and their life. And Father, as we turn now to the table of rejoicing and celebration and community, we thank you for what you've provided for us this morning. We thank you for the food that you nourish us with, both spiritually and physically. And we pray all of this in the beautiful name of Jesus, who we come every, every Sunday to rejoice in the reality of. And all God's people said, amen. So grab your chairs. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Appreciate that. And I do need a motion to adjourn, so if I can have that from somebody out there. A second, anyone? Okay, we are moving this congregational to a close. Thank you for being a part of it, and enjoy our lunch barbecue. Cookout. Right? <laughs>